I made a video two weeks ago where I said what curse techniques I thought were the strongest in Jujutsu Kaisen. Today I thought I would sort of do the opposite of that video and say which curse techniques I believe without a doubt are the worst in the series. Now I did think about ranking these you know from 1 to 10 in terms of how bad they are but after looking at all of them and trust me I tried I couldn't really give them an order. All of these curse techniques are just bad. Now keep in mind when I say a curse technique is bad I'm not saying that it's just outright useless. I am saying that compared to the other curse techniques in the show these are definitely in the bottom tier. First I want to say if you enjoy JJK content then please leave a like and subscribe to the channel as I upload every couple of days on different topics that you guys give me and a few I come up with myself. With that being said, let's get into the honorable mentions. And for this video, the only honorable mention will be Takaba and his curse technique, the comedian. Now the thing with the comedian is that his curse technique allows him to either be the strongest in the series or the weakest at the same time. What I mean by this is that anything that Takaba finds funny becomes true. So say if he found it funny to beat Gojo or if he found it funny to beat Sukuna. By the logic of his curse technique, he should be able to do so. But at the same time, if he does not find anything funny, say if he's having a bad day or something, his curse technique would basically be void. It would be useless. And he's also not even aware that he has this technique. So for the simple fact that his curse technique can be useless, but at the same time also be the strongest, I'll let you guys place this curse technique and tell me where you think this curse technique is. But for the simple fact that it can either be the strongest or, you know, the most useless technique, I'll just put it in the honorable mentions and let you guys decide. Now that the honorable mention is out of the way, let's get into the next curse technique that will be on the list for the worst curse techniques. And first up, we'll have Haruta and his miracle curse technique. The way the technique works is that little everyday miracles are erased from Shigemo's memory and stored. The stored miracles are then released when Shigemo's life is in danger. The markings under his eyes indicate how many miracles he has stored, but even he is not aware of this fact. So basically he can just keep stored up miracles, but the problem with this curse technique is that if he's just weak, like he is, he'll just get beat up and the curse technique is useless. It's not even like a combative curse technique. If anything, if the opponent is stronger than you, like we saw with Nanami, Nanami just gave Haruta a beat down. So even if he has all these miracles, it would just be, okay, say Haruta has four miracles. Beat down number one, one of your miracles is used. Then Nanami just beats you down again. And your miracles just keep getting used up as you keep getting beat down. If anything, this curse technique seems like it just delays the inevitable. Sure, it can be useful in the sense that maybe you can escape after using one of your miracles. But in like a fighting sense, this curse technique is awful. If you're facing a stronger opponent, one of your miracles will just go away and you'll continue to keep getting beat up. So for these reasons, I think Haruta's curse technique of these miracles definitely has to go in the worst curse techniques list. Next up, we have Momo's curse technique, which is simply just flying on a broomstick. This curse technique is awful. Not only is she weak, but all it is is just simply being in the air. And that would be a good thing if most of the sorcerers in Jujutsu Kaisen didn't have something to hit you anyways. Like for example, we know Megami can use his new way to knock her down. We have attacks like Ryu's Granite Blast, which fly across the cities. We have Thin Icebreaker from Uro, Cursed Speech from Yuta. I mean, even Kashimo has lightning that should be able to hit her. And we even know that maybe even Toto could hit her. What I mean by this is, when Toto was fighting that isomer that Mahito summoned, Toto covered a rock and cursed energy through the rock, then traded with the rock by clapping. Toto could probably throw a rock up at her for all we know, and then hit her down. This curse technique of just flying around is awful. There's other curse techniques, of course, that would be able to hit her, like Sakuna slashes, Gojo's techniques. There's literally just so many techniques within the verse that can hit her even when she's in the sky. And also, we know that characters are just notorious for being able to run up buildings. Maki can run up a building. Yuji can run up a building. Jogo running up a building. All of these characters, they can just run up and jump highly in the sky anyways. So this curse technique is not even like a good combative technique. You could say that the curse technique is sort of good for evading. But even then, you know, most characters just have either a way to go up there and get you physically or a curse technique that can hit you. So this curse technique would be good, you know, if most sorcerers didn't have something to combat you anyway. So for those reasons, Momo's curse technique makes the list for the worst curse techniques. Next up on the list, we will have, you know, the two girls that are part of Ghetto's group in Volume Zero. They use the cameras to attack their opponent. 
that camera technique is god awful. First of all, you have to be caught in the camera frame to get affected. But if you're just fast enough to move out of the way of the camera, you know, like most characters are, you literally would have no trouble fighting these girls. They don't seem, you know, physically strong or fast themselves. So they mostly try to get their opponent either off guard or standing still so they can snap a good photo. But we saw with the character like 15 Finger Sakuna back in Shibuya, he was just able to send out slashes and literally destroy one of the girls. Because it's like also in a fight, you're not really going to have time to whip out a camera pointed at your opponent and take a picture before they either launch a technique at you like blood manipulation or anything else and just hit you. There are too many different techniques within the verse to where trying to take a picture of somebody in a fight, trying to catch them in the still frame would literally prove useless, which is probably why Gege never gave them, you know, actual fights. Gege always had them try to take pictures of people while they weren't paying attention. Like they took a picture of Jogo while he wasn't fully paying attention. So, you know, they sort of have to catch somebody off guard. But in a combative sense, this curse technique is horrible. The best you could get out of this technique is if like you have them in the corner somewhere. So while you're fighting somebody, you have them on your team off to the side trying to take pictures. But in a one on one scenario, this camera technique is just god awful. So for those reasons, the camera technique makes the list. All right, next up on the list, and I actually like this character, so it is sad for me to put him on the list. But Eno's auspicious beast summons are pretty bad. We you know when Eno was fighting that grandma on the rooftop, her random son, you know, that random guy, he was able to tank one of the auspicious beast summons. And we sort of get an explanation for what these auspicious beast summons are, number one through four. The first is named Kaichi. It is a horn that automatically hones in on its target. It hurts if you get stabbed, it can even draw blood. Then we know that the second summon is supposed to be Raiki. It's cursed water that covers your body. You can use it as a cushion for defense. If you cover your feet with it, you can move by sliding around. The third is Kirin. It drugs the brain. If you're feeling body pains, magically gone like poof. For those of you who can't afford to take the day off, beware the crash after the effects wear off. So that's Kirin. And then number four, the fourth beast summon is Ryu. And nobody has survived to tell the tale after fighting Ryu. But the sad thing is we actually see the first and second beast summon used. The first one is awful. That random son of the grandma on the rooftop, he was able to take the first summon to the arm. It didn't even really damage him. Like you can say it damaged his arm, of course, but the guy just looks at his arm with no reaction and is just prepared to keep on fighting. And then when we see the second beast summon get summoned by Eno, it looks like he just covers his feet and body in the water, but it doesn't even look like he gets any faster. He's still sort of scared to approach the grandson even with this beast summon. So it's like we see two out of the four be used, but they're just useless when we see both of these beast summons used. You know, sadly, we never see the third beast summon get used. But when Toji comes out, you know, after the grandma summons Toji's body, he actually tries to use auspicious beast number four, which is Ryu. But Toji blitzes him before he can get it off. So, you know, it is sort of sad that before we got to see auspicious beast number four be used, he had to fight Toji with it. But honestly, the way it's looking, the other beast summons are just useless. And if they are useful, it would have to be against like an average person or like a lower level sorcerer. This curse technique seems like it may have potential depending on how strong this fourth beast summon is, but we never really see it get used and the other summons are useless. So you can sort of go from there. And for those reasons, Auspicious Beast makes the list as one of the worst curse techniques. Now, next up on the list, and you know, you might not expect this, but Mechamaru's curse technique is puppet manipulation. It's not, you know, the form or that mecha suit that he has. The curse technique itself is being able to control things from far away. Now, here's the thing about his technique. It can sort of have upsides and downsides. And that is that Mechamaru needs to be controlling something super strong in order for, you know, the curse technique to be good. And the suit that we see him use in like his fight against Panda, for example, is pretty bad. It has like good output. You know, Panda is able to take it as he has the three different cores. It's not like it takes chunks of Panda's body off or anything. And we also see that the exterior of it also isn't that strong either. As Panda has this unblockable drum beat. 
and he hits Mechamaru with it twice, and those two hits make it where Mechamaru can barely even move anymore. And we say that the third hit from Panda just takes him completely out. You know, these same hits, you know, granted Panda was going against Kashimo, but this same hit didn't even affect Kashimo. But just three hits of this took Mechamaru's, you know, his ultimate Mechamaru form completely out. The only time we saw this suit be like really useful was in his fight against Mahito. And that was when he had his different form, you know, the best suit that he's had so far. But like I said before, this curse technique is really dependent on, you know, what suits you have that you can control. So for the suit at the beginning of the series, for example, like during Goodwill, being able to control that suit is like mid, you know, around like a lower or maybe like a high grade one sort of strength in that grade one level. But when he was able to control that better suit against Mahito, Kenjaku said that he had output on the level of a special grade. But then again, you know, that is a byproduct of the suit itself. That's not like a byproduct of the technique. The technique itself is just having puppet manipulation. So this technique on its own is sort of, you know, bad. It just depends on what you can and can't control. And even in that suit, when he was fighting against Mahito, he was in the thing directly controlling it. It's not even like he was using puppet manipulation in that scenario. So the only time we actually like really see him use puppet manipulation is in his fight against Panda. And it didn't even seem that impressive there. So even though this technique can be useful, I would say that this is one of the more useful on this list. You know, one of the curse techniques that might actually be viable in some circumstances. It still is when compared to the other curse techniques we see throughout the series. This just can't compare with those. This is definitely one of the worst curse techniques that we see. Next up on the list, we have Principal Gaku Ganji. And I don't even know where to begin. This is an old man who tries to be like a rock star of some sort. And granted, it does look cool in the anime, but his curse technique is just releasing curse energy with this guitar. But the problem with this is, as far as we see in his two fights, you know, once against the coat racket guy and then once against the other principal Yaga, he has to be in front of the opponent. Then he has to have enough time to play the guitar and then let the curse energy go out towards the opponent. The problem with this curse technique is it could prove to be too slow in an actual combat scenario. There are other curse techniques in the series like blood manipulation that have fast attacks. Megami has his 10 shadows technique. You know, there's projection sorcery, so on. All of these attacks are known for being good in combat, these different curse techniques. But this curse technique of the guitar, you sort of have to be directly in front of the opponent and then play the guitar. And then there's also a chance that your opponent sees the curse energy coming and might just be fast enough to move out of the way. So even though the guitar is one of the better on this list for like combat scenarios, it still is pretty bad for the simple reason that if your opponent can just see the curse energy coming, they could just move out of the way. And then for the fact that as far as we've seen in the series, at least, you have to be directly in front of your opponent to really get a good hit with the guitar. So for those reasons, the principal Gaku Ganji's curse technique of just playing the guitar in front of his opponent definitely makes the list is on the lower tiers, one of the worst curse techniques we see in the series. Next up on the list, we have Mai's curse technique, which is creation. And at first glance, you might think that, wow, this curse technique is super powerful. It can create things from nothing. But the problem is it can't create anything big. In the fan book, it says the biggest thing she can create is Kinkeshi at best. And it says that Kinkeshi are eraser shaped like wrestlers. So, you know, something about the size of an eraser. And we also see that she can only make one bullet a day with this curse technique. And I will say this, if she could create more than one bullet, say she could create a bunch of ammo or say she could create something bigger, you know, something like a divine dog or something crazy like that, then this curse technique would be way higher within the series. But for the simple fact that she can't create anything big and that her whole curse technique is revolved around, you know, shooting a revolver and the fact that she can only make one bullet a day, this curse technique just has to be one of the worst in the series. The best thing she can try to get off is like a surprise attack like she tries to do against Maki back in Goodwill. But even this Maki, who's not even like scaling high within the series during this point, you know, we do know that Maki gets stronger later on. But this Maki and Goodwill, who was still weaker than majority of the characters in the series, this Maki was able to react to and catch the off guard bullet that Mai shot at her at near point blank range. So her curse technique is basically useless. If Maki from Goodwill could react and catch this bullet, 
then basically every other average or higher end combatant in the series will be able to just do the same. So like I said, if she could create something bigger, if she could create more bullets, for example, then this Curse Technique definitely would be more viable. But for the fact that the biggest thing she can create is something the size of an eraser and she can only create one bullet a day, this Curse Technique just has to make the list is one of the worst. Next up on the list, we have Junpei's Curse Technique. And when Mahito transfigures Junpei to, you know, make him be able to use Curse Energy, he says that Junpei's Curse Technique is poison. And the way the poison will be transmitted to the opponent is through the tendrils of the Shikigami he has. But the problem is, even while fighting an inexperienced fighter in Yuji, Yuji was able to outspeed the tendrils when he wanted to. When Junpei tried to hit him with the Shikigami, Yuji just put Curse Energy in his fist, then punched the ground. And Yuji even remembered what Gojo taught him, that when fighting Shikigami users, just go for the user themselves. He's able to go up and land a clean punch on Junpei. So the thing with Junpei is, not only is he, you know, slow himself, so you also have to like have this speed to keep up with your opponent. The Shikigami itself can be outsped. You know, it doesn't look that fast. And it might also be because Junpei himself is weak. But you know, this is the only time we see this curse technique be used. So for the simple fact that Junpei was getting reacted to when Yuji wanted to, because you know Yuji did let himself get hit by the Shikigami towards the end of the fight. But Yuji was able to destroy part of the Shikigami when he wanted to earlier in the fight. So for the simple fact that Junpei got punched in the face and Yuji was able to just come up on him. And also if you're just not physically there as an opponent, having the Shikigami technique just isn't that powerful. These reasons just lead for this curse technique to be on the list as one of the worst. Now last on the list, we will put Karara's curse technique, which is the Southern Cross. Now, when first looking at it, it is sort of confusing and a bit hard to get, but I'll just sort of give you the gist of what the curse technique is. When Karada puts a star on themselves or another opponent, the people with the stars cannot meet. So Karada uses four stars in the manga. They put one on the door, one on Panda, one on Megami, and we assume that one is on themselves as well. And basically, if a star is on you, you can't get next to the person or thing that has the other star. So this curse technique isn't like a combative curse technique. It is actually the least combative curse technique on this list. This curse technique is just supposed to keep somebody away from something or someone. It's more so of a curse technique that keeps somebody at bay until help arrives, which is what Karada tries to do. Karada tries to keep Megami out of the door so that Hikari can come out and, you know, help them. So this curse technique is definitely more on the assistive side, more than so of a 1v1 side. And we even see that Megami being as smart as he is, he's sort of able to defeat the puzzle to this Southern Cross. And he finds a way to where he will be able to go in some sequential order to be able to move. So we know that this curse technique can be defeated. So the fact that this curse technique doesn't have any like real attacks, it just keeps the opponent away. And the fact that this curse technique can be found out to where you are able to move to different areas. Karada's curse technique of the Southern Cross is probably the worst in this series, especially when we're talking about a fighting scenario. The only time I see this curse technique being really useful is if you have a team of people. You know, Karada puts a bunch of crosses on the different people that you're fighting in sort of like a group battle or something. So that the people you're fighting are sort of confused as to why they can't move to certain areas. But if we're talking a 1v1 scenario, like in a 1v1 battle, this curse technique is awful. It probably is the worst one in the series. And with that being said, that will be the end of the list. If there's anybody that you think I should have added, or if you think that there's somebody I should not have put on the list, please let me know in the comments below. And if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel. As I post videos every couple days on different topics that you guys give me and a few I come up with myself. Thank you for watching. See you next time.